Hey, what's going on DJI pilots and aerial photographers all around the world? I hope you're enjoying your day today. I know I am and I'm really excited to bring to you a special video recording of me. Uh, my name is Scott, by the way, I'm out here in Southern California and I've been using my DJI Vision Plus now for quite a while, about a week and a half. <laughs> and I love it, absolutely love it. And so I know a lot of questions that people have on their minds is what settings should I use inside the DJI Vision app? And not only what settings, but what gives me the best performance, correct? You guys all here with me, right? What gives me the best performance when it comes to my camera that's attached, as well as being able to have my drone uh, go out as far as possible um, in the sky and still have a connection and I'm gonna start that off uh, first by going under settings okay and we first want to start off by clicking on preview quality okay this is important because what I've noticed is the reason why I like 640 by 480 15 FPS is I can still see what my camera sees even though I'm high in the sky I can still see the surfer, I can see the dolphins. If I go too low, I won't be able to see. It's too uh, choppy and too blurry. And so you still wanna have good enough quality, but you don't wanna be maxed out. And the reason why you don't wanna have 640 by 480 because it's a lot of bandwidth to communicate from your, um, your Wi-Fi extender to your iPhone. It's a lot of bandwidth from your drone to your Wi-Fi extender to your camera to get that kind of quality. So you still want to be able to fly out far away, still have good quality, but you're not looking to get the best, okay? So that's what I initially start off with when it comes to preview quality. Now the next thing is, I like to use my ground station app. Okay, that's the reason why that's on. And what's cool here is they talk about, you know, how to do a compass calibration, you know, uh, holding your, your, you know, your drone up and twisting it around. And this is real quick, you know, just a piece of advice before I go into the camera settings itself and which camera actual settings that I use when I'm flying. But just real quick, guys, um, I know many of you might have your own opinion on this, but this is my opinion that I am calibrating my um, drone every time I fly, no matter what. I've seen too many horror stories where the drone will just fly away and people will say, well, I guess it was because of compass calibration. So I don't have a problem doing that whether I drive from my house to the beach. I do that no matter what. Um, obviously low battery auto go home, that's on. And dynamic home point. There's a lot of people that don't understand what this means, dynamic home point. And I've seen a video on YouTube that shows exactly how this works. So I want you to imagine if <clears throat> you get in your car, right? And your drone is above you like 100 feet or 200 feet and you get in your car and you have your controller in your car your phone, everything is connected, your, your drone is hovering. What's happening is now if you drive in your car like 20 feet or 30 feet, your drone is gonna follow you where, where, whenever you activate this. So like, let's imagine, let's say that you, you fly your drone out 200 feet above you, okay, 50 feet out in front of you. So 200 above you, 50 feet out in front of you. When you start driving, your drone will start moving as your camera is facing you. So if you wanted to, to um, actually have it follow you in your car, you just, you fly it out in front of you, you have the camera face down angled at you, and then you turn it on and you start driving. You wanna be aware of trees, uh, power line poles, any of that stuff. But that's how that works. It's a beautiful feature uh, if, if that's how you wanna use it. And, and it definitely can be explored more than just driving in your car, but that's one feature. So I'm gonna turn that off. Now here's another feature that, that wasn't available until recently, which is the current return home altitude. And the reason why I like it at least at a 200 feet is because when you have your drone come at you, you wanna make sure it's not just beelining it wherever it is. You wanna make sure it comes at you high in the sky just in case it doesn't run into any trees. I've seen too many horror story videos on YouTube where someone will flip the switch, have the drone come home, but it doesn't go high enough to reach over the trees. So that's why I set my altitude at 200. And obviously we wanna turn off the FPV mode so we get nice, smooth, cinematic quality video. So we wanna turn that off. 
And a lot of these other settings, guys, like rotation lock, low battery, I'm not too sure about that. So I'm not going to go into that. So let's just dive over into the camera settings, which I think mo what most people are real excited about. So this is what I'm excited to share with you guys on how the camera settings work, okay? So don't worry about the camera itself. It's just on the floor right now. It's even got the cover on the lens. But I wanted to talk to you about the settings. So obviously if you click on that setting button over here on the right, right below the video button, okay? Right below the video button, you just click on that, okay? And all these settings are gonna pop up on the left hand side. And I didn't notice this, but you can actually scroll up and down, scroll up and down. And these are all the settings right here. Okay, so I want you to imagine if you were gonna fly during the daylight time during the day okay so you want to first start off by clicking on the settings you want to make sure that you start off with a large photo okay that means large it means 14 megapixel this is small that's medium we want to use large the second thing is we want to start off with 1080p 30 fps okay 30p 1080p 30 okay and we want to do widescreen this is middle screen and widescreen all TVs all laptops, all phones, everything is widescreen. So you, I don't, you always want to do widescreen no matter what. You go ahead and click on that. And this is interesting. This is for taking pictures, guys. This has nothing to do with videos right here. When you click on RAW, JPEG or RAW, and RAW has everything to do with, if you wanted to take your photos, which I highly recommend, and put them into like a photo editing um, software like Adobe or Premiere or any of these photo editing, you want to take the raw because it has a format that you're able to edit with okay when it's just a JPEG you it, you don't have the options like what a raw photo would so JPEG is only for like people who don't want to edit who just want to take the picture and just post it up online without having to do any like you know color editing and stuff like that so I'm not real too in editing so I'm just gonna do JPEG myself now Remember, we're flying in daylight, so this, this button over here that says ISO, uh, a gentleman named Russell who actually runs an, an Adobe Premiere photo video editing business recommended that we all do 100 for flying at, at daytime. And I also recommend 100 for literally across the board. So guys, I want you to imagine if you, if you take your drone up in the sky, 100 is actually good for everything okay and I'm gonna share with you why that is because there's a reason why you want to just have a hundred because the higher you go the more distorted the picture becomes it actually magnifies the color so I want you to imagine if you were filming like a flame like a, a candle or a flame the higher you go the more extorted the flame gets the more um, the more color uh, comes out of it right and so if you're flying in the sky at night you want to be very crisp in your flight. You want to be. You're, you're, you want your picture very crisp. You don't want a bunch of very distorted lights popping out. And so that's why I recommend ISO 100 all the way around. Okay. So this is really big. Our next feature right here is important. Okay. So here we have um, the white balance feature. Okay. And what you want to be doing is if you're flying during the day, you want to do the sun right here. The sun okay what it's clicked on if it's really cloudy out you want to do the clouds but reality guys you want to do the Sun and if you want to fly at nighttime this is really important you want to do the bottom right one okay bottom right okay guys remember if you're flying at night you want to do that okay now that's important so imagine flying at night bottom right okay now, the next really important setting that we want to focus on is this puppy right here. Okay, this is called the metering, um, metering setting, okay? So, the setting that you want is the one on the far right, okay? The reason why you want that setting is it takes the spot, which is this one, and it takes the average and it puts them together. So, this setting right here is the best hands down I mean, I've done many tests where it actually proves that is the best setting. Okay, so that is the metering portion. Okay, so it's the far right and it's called average. So the, set, so the next setting is our white balance. It's like another white balance. So if, if it's really dark out, guys, 
then you would want to go up. But if it's really uh, colorful out, really bright, you would want to go down to point zero, negative point zero three. So this is for daytime flying, okay? Negative point zero three. If you want to just go zero, you can. But ultimately, if you go up, that's for when it gets when it's really dark outside, okay? And you can see the camera get really bright, okay? So nighttime flying, move that up. Okay, daytime flying, you want to be point, negative point three. Okay, so the next setting you don't really need to worry about. You just need to choose standard. Um, I've, I've done many tests on this myself, standard, hard, and soft. Standard works best every time. So guys, that's the settings right there. That's what I use. This is what I've tested, and this is what works for me. So if you have any suggestions, please comment below. Let me know if you learned something or what you liked about this video. And I hope this helped you quite a bit for your flying in the sky. So that's about it, guys. I guess the next setting would be is um, uh, before you leave the house, if you don't have internet connection when it comes to setting your waypoints, okay, when it comes to pointing your waypoints here, is you need to have internet connection first to um, be able to have the maps here, okay? The map is important. So... Uh, that's important. And another, another thing, guys, is when you do your altitudes, you want to have your altitudes all the same. So if it's 229 here, you want to have 229 here because, guys, what happens is once it's in the sky, right, it's, it's wasting a lot of power having to go up and down, up and down when you're having it go from 300 to 200 to 400 to 600. You want to, if you're going to make a waypoints, you really just want to have it go all one height, okay? And that was, a, that was a setting from a friend of mine who really knows what he's doing. He flies these things for miles using his Android device. And if you guys want to get rid of the points here, only being able to go out, uh, I think, like 1,600 feet, okay, you need to get an Android device, an Android tablet that has, it's a cracked app from a person called I Love Coffee who cracked the app. And so you can honestly fly like for miles. You can fly like way over here, right? And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So I'm actually going to get an Android real soon. But in the meantime, these are your settings for your, um, for your camera, okay? And if you have any questions, let me know. Be more than happy to help you all. And like I said, if whatever you liked about this video, please tell me. I'm definitely interested in finding out. So... Until then, my friends, I'll talk to you all soon, and uh, let's, let's fly safe, and let's have fun. Bye-bye.